everyone, I am Sammy, your devoted manga otaku, and welcome to my manga space. Today, I will be hauling and unboxing books for the month of February. It's mostly just a right stuff package that I ordered during the holidays, but I'm also hauling a couple pre-orders and volumes that were out of stock through right stuff. In total, I think I spent around $350 on manga, but I couldn't help myself. I just had to take advantage of the sales. They were just too good to pass up. And for those wondering where my collection video is, it will be coming out soon, I promise. I tried my hardest to finish it before the end of February. I didn't realize how long it was going to take to script film and then edit a collection video. It's a massive undertaking, especially with my collection, because I have so many series to go over. So I opted to release this video so I could release something this month, but you shouldn't have to wait much longer, that I can guarantee. <laughs> Now, the first part of this video will be dedicated to opening all of the packaging, while the second portion will be me discussing this manga in more detail. I always include timestamps in my videos, so feel free to jump around. And with that, I invite you to grab a coffee or other beverage of your choice, and let's unbox some manga!
unboxing portion of this video, and without skipping a beat, let's haul some manga. The first few manga I'm hauling today are volumes 1 through 3 of the Square Enix publication Cherry Magic 30 Years of Virginity Can Make You a Wizard by Yu Toyota. I sort of bought this series on a whim because I saw these volumes bundled together during one of the Right Stuff sales and I thought, why not? I've been wanting to buy more Yaoi titles and I've heard really good things about this series. This is an ongoing office romance that follows a virgin named Adachi, and after his 30th birthday, he discovers that he has developed a magical ability that allows him to read the thoughts of others by touching them. With this newfound power, Adachi learns that his colleague, the charismatic and handsome Kurosawa, has a crush on him. The premise of this manga sounds really silly, but I've seen a lot of reviewers describe it as being super funny and sweet. I don't know how many volumes are going to be in this series. I saw one source say that there would be seven volumes, while another mentioned that there would be five. I know that the fourth volume is releasing soon, so there's at least four volumes. <laughs> Either way, I'm really looking forward to this. Also, there's a very popular live action adaptation of this manga, so that might be worth checking out as well. The next thing I'm hauling is volume three of the Seven Seas publication, Manly Appetites, Minigishi Loves Otsu by Nito. Basically, this is a BL rom-com following a grumpy office worker named Otsu and his co-worker Minikishi, who simply adores Otsu and chooses to express his love through food. The plot and the characters sound adorable, plus I love Nito sensei's art style and the designs of the covers. I think the pastel colors look amazing, but one thing I noticed when I had them all together on the shelf is that volume 2 has a pink fork on its spine, despite the cover of volume 2 being blue. The forks on the first and third volumes match the colors of the covers, so I'm not really sure why the fork for volume 2 is different. I thought maybe they would all all three of them would be pink, but that's not the case. And it's kind of annoying, if I'm being honest. Forks aside, I am eager to read this series, and I've been eager to read it since receiving the first volume for my birthday, and now that I have the final volume, I can binge it and watch these cute monk boys fall in love. And then we have volume two of the Seinen series, JK Haru is a sex worker in another world, story by Ko Hiratori and art by J. Yamada. In the first volume, Haru and her idiot classmate Chiba die in an accident and are transported to a medieval fantasy world where women are treated as objects and as property. In order to survive, Haru becomes a sex worker, while Chiba, who was granted special powers upon arrival, gets to explore the world as an adventurer. I thoroughly enjoyed the first volume of this Ghost Ship series. I think I ended up giving it four and a half stars. I liked the dark humor, and I thought the narrative was interesting and thought-provoking. Also, it touches on some very heartbreaking and heavy topics while focusing on the day to on the day-to-day -day life of a sex worker. I'm very excited to read this. I adore Haru's character, and I'm curious to see what's in store for her in the second volume. Up next, I'm hauling volumes one and two of the ongoing Shonen series, To Your Eternity by Yoshitoki Oima. I know very little about this Kodansha publication. I know that the plot follows an otherworldly being that takes the form of different things, but that's the extent of my knowledge. <laughs> Now, I'm aware that this is a very popular series among the manga community. It has fantastic reviews, but I'm not really sure why I bought this. <laughs> I'm not really in a position to take on another manga series. My pre-order list at the moment is massive, and there are still 14 more books of To Your Eternity to collect, 
and it's still ongoing. <laughs> Honestly, I'm afraid to read this because I'll probably get addicted and make some bad financial decisions. <laughs> I'll probably look into buying more volumes of this later in the year after some of my other manga series have wrapped up or if there's a really awesome sale. I do plan on collecting this at some point though, because like I said, it's supposed to be really good. <laughs> This next series is another Kodansha publication, and that's volumes four through eight of the ongoing series, Night of the Ice by Yayoi Ogawa. I ended up ordering volumes four through seven through Right Stuff, and then my pre-order for volume eight arrived earlier this month from Indigo. Basically, Night of the Ice follows Chitos, a young career woman with serious aspirations to further her career as a journalist for a health and fitness magazine. However, it's hard for her to focus on her job because her childhood friend Kokoro is a renowned figure skater and closet otaku who needs Chitos to recite a spell from his favorite magical girl anime in order to soothe his nerves before competition. I recently read volumes one through three of this Jose series. If you'd like to hear my in-depth, spoiler-free thoughts on those volumes, I'll leave a card on the screen and a link in the description. But to put it briefly, I thought it was good and really cute. I'm also kind of proud of myself for taste testing this manga before buying the rest of the series. I find it hard to offload manga I don't want anymore, so I'm trying to be more cautious of what I'm buying. Also, if there are any other Canadian manga collectors in my audience, I'd love to know how you unhaul unwanted manga. And then we have volumes one through five of the Seinen series, Go With The Clouds, North by Northwest by Aki Airi, or Iri? Not sure how to pronounce that. <laughs> this vertical publication is a mystery detective type story, and it's set in Iceland, and it follows a 17-year-old boy who can talk to machines. Using this special ability, he works as a private investigator while also journeying through Iceland searching for his younger brother. From the reviews that I've read, this sounds like it's a manga that has a slow start, but it gets better with every volume. I like the premise and I really love the artwork. It's beautifully drawn and whimsical, but I bought this assuming that it was a short series and therefore a small investment. Turns out that this is ongoing with the sixth volume releasing in September 2023. It's my own fault. <laughs> I should have done a little more research, but I probably wouldn't have bought this if I would have known that the series wasn't finished. Nevertheless, I will read this at some point, just not as soon as I previously planned probably closer to the release date of the next volume. Up next, we have volume 12 of the Viz Media publication, Love Me, Love Me Not by Ayo Saki Saka. This, this shoujo series follows two high school girls, Yuna and Akari. The pair meet and quickly become best friends despite being complete opposites. Yuna is an idealist while Akari is a realist and things get complicated as the girls take different approaches to boys and falling in love. I've been collecting this series for over a year now and I've heard amazing things about Saki Saka Sensei's storytelling and her art style is very cute. I'm super excited to finally binge this series. It has been a long time coming. Moving on, we have volume 8 of the psychological horror Blood on the Tracks by Shuzo Oshimi. Indigo actually sent this volume to me a week early, and that's only ever happened like two times, so it was such a nice surprise to receive this in the mail. The plot of this vertical series centers around the relationship between an overprotective mother and her son, but I won't say anything else because it'll ruin the shock of this series. Just know that I rate this series five stars and it comes highly recommended from me. It'll also ruin your day, but in a good way. <laughs> and then we have a manga that debuted fairly recently and that's volumes one and two of Lovesick Ellie by Fujimomo. I was super thrilled to hear that Lovesick Ellie was getting a paperback release because I have this list of digital manga that I would like paperback releases for and this series was on my list. 
So thank you Kodansha for making that dream come true. <laughs> this quirky romance revolves around a plain and invisible high schooler named Eriko who has a crush on a prince-like boy at her school named Omi. Eriko gawks at Omi from afar and shares her fantasies of dating him on her secret Twitter account under the false name Lovesick Ellie. One day, both these characters discover each other's secrets, allowing them to be their true selves around each other. I've read both these volumes already, and I don't want to say too much because I'll be talking about them in my monthly wrap up, but wow, this series is hilarious and the characters are so stinking cute. It's so refreshing to see a lead female character who's awkward but isn't completely innocent. I'm very happy to have this series in my collection. The next thing I'm hauling isn't a manga, it's a manhwa which is actually adapted from a series of Korean novels, and that's volumes 1 through 3 of Solo Leveling, story by Shigong, and art by Jibu. I'm sorry if I mispronounced those names. And I actually just noticed recently, uh, while I took this off the shelf and I was looking at it, that it is damaged. It is all scuffed up and scratched, and <sighs> that makes me very sad. <laughs> now, from my understanding, uh, the storyline of this Yen Press publication follows a hunter named Sung Jin Woo, and hunters fight monsters. Unfortunately, he's considered the weakest hunter among the rest, and he must build up his strength and power in order to move up the ranks. I first heard about this series from Elite Collector's channel and was drawn to the artwork and the full color pages. Also, the lead character reminds me of Kirito from Sword Art Online because Kirito was also a lone wolf and solo leveler. I see a lot of praise for this series on Goodreads and reviewers have been recommending this to people who enjoy mysteries and RPGs which means that this is right up my alley. Also, it sounds like something my husband might read, which is an added bonus. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to jumping into this video game-esque adventure. The back is all stuffed up too. <sighs> I hate that. I hate when new books come damaged. Not my favorite. That was a right stuff book too. Usually they're pretty good about sending undamaged products. <laughs> Moving on, we have volume one of the shoujo comedy Cheeky Brat by Miyuki Mitsubachi. This Yen Press story revolves around Yuki, a girl who becomes the manager of the basketball team in order to get closer to the boy she likes. However, a cheeky underclassman discovers her secret and is determined to keep her all to himself. I'm not sure how to feel about this purchase, to be honest. On the one hand, the art is cute and the reviews are good, but on the other hand, I recently learned that this is a very long series. There are 22 volumes released so far in Japan, and it's still ongoing. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to read this volume and gauge my interest, and then wait to see what people think of the next five volumes before I buy anything else. I always get really anxious when I start investing in a bigger series because what if halfway through I start disliking it? Ancient Magus Bride, I'm looking at you. <laughs> and then we have the book The History of Hentai Manga by Kimi Rito. Now Right Stuff describes this book as being a rare in-depth look at Japan's wide world of adult comics and its symbolism within Japanese popular culture. After reading the table of contents, I feel like I need to share some of the chapter titles with you guys. So chapter one, how breast expressions have changed over time. Chapter two, the spread of the nipple after image. Chapter three, reinventing the tentacle. And chapter four, the evolution of the cross section view. I think that's all I'm going to spoil, but it looks like there are nine chapters altogether. <laughs> The book also includes black and white illustrations and examples throughout. They are obviously graphic, so I can't give you a sneak peek, but I'm overall very curious about this book. It sounds very interesting and informational. 
Moving on, we have volumes one and two of the Biz Media publication, My Love Mix Up, written by Wataru Hinakure and illustrated by Aruko. I'm going to read the synopsis of this manga to you guys. <laughs> Aoki has a crush on Hashimoto, the girl in the seat next to him in class, but he despairs when he borrows her eraser and see she's written the name of another boy, Ida, on it. To make matters more confusing, Ida sees him holding that very eraser and thinks Aoki has a crush on him. I read both of these volumes earlier this month and I loved it so much. Usually I'm not a fan of narratives that center around poor communication and misunderstandings, but I didn't mind these mix-ups at all. They lead to multiple heartfelt and hilarious moments where the characters get a chance to learn things about themselves. I'm really excited to talk about this in my wrap-up. It was a perfect manga to read in February. It's just an overall bundle of love, joy, and laughter. And the last series I'm hauling today is volumes 1 through 6 of the ongoing series Love of Kill by V, I think is how you pronounce it. <laughs> this Yen Press story is actually a shoujo series, which surprised me because it has a decent blend of action, gore, and death with a little sprinkle of romance on top. Love of Kill is an enemies to lovers type story following a bounty hunter and an assassin who end up crossing paths during a hit and one of them becomes utterly smitten with the other. I read these volumes earlier this month and now I see why there was so much hype over this manga on Instagram and why people were talking about it so much. This is a pretty awesome spy story and I love the male lead, Ryan Ha. I know he's kind of a stalker, but he's hot and he has these really cute moments. I really like the art and I love the addition of the colored pages. I'm really looking forward to talking about this in more detail in my manga wrap up. And that, friends, is the end of my February manga haul video. If you've read any of these titles, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you're interested in watching more videos from me, you can check out my end card where I'll have links to my most recent videos. I hope you all have a manga day, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!